دكتور أحمد الحجر he have been working in UK since years and right now he will give us his experience in pediatric he is working in very busy site which have everything and right now he is will give us nice brief and nice presentation about the lines and tubes in pediatrics and some other issues which is very uh, usual again in many uh, uh, in the exams in many questions in exams in general and FRCRs for sure and also you'll have uh, the most important that you have to be careful in the practice uh, because this is usual study cases uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, also is working in the courses of uh, Radmi and they have been uh, uh, giving like many lectures as all our colleagues in this scientific days uh, inshallah he will give us now the his nice presentation are you ready dr ahmed like to take the yes part? dr mahmoud yes yeah <laughs> thank you so go on yes okay Th thanks dr mahmoud for uh, this presentation uh i will share my screen okay uh, let's start our talk Okay, in, in this short talk, I will try to review the most seen devices in unit and pediatric. Uh, I know well that the issue of tubes and lines uh, looks like a nightmare for some doctors. Uh, for example, this radiograph. If you see th this radiograph, you will take time reporting each tube more than the time taken to uh, report the radiograph itself. Uh, in this topic, I will try to simplify uh, and, and make a quick review for me and for you about the neonatal and pediatric tubes online. And now let's start. Okay. In this talk, we will speak about uh, intracranial tube. And in each tube, we will discuss the correct position and potential malpositioned location and its incidence as well as its complication. Uh, in endotracheal tube, as we know, the correct position will be the midpoint between the trachea and the inferior margins of the clavicle. In neonates, roughly about 1.5 centimeter above the carina. The potential malpositioned location, as we know all in FRCR exam, because this is a very important topic in the FRCR exam, may be in the bronchus and rarely in the esophagus. The potential complication will be like a trauma infection or aspiration, and this is a percentage of incidence of malpositioning. In case of uh, uh, the, the other tube we have today is a tracheostomy tube, and I think its position is almost in, in near to the intratracheal tube. It is midway between the uh, carina, but in this time will be between the carina and the stoma of the uh, uh, endotracheal tube, which will be slightly higher than the lower end of the clavicle. The potential malpositioned location will be in or out of the esophagus, and the potential complication will be bleeding, clogging, infection, leaks, and the granulation, and this is a percentage of incidence. Also, we will speak about the chest tubes. As we know, this is used in case of pneumothorax or collection like uh, effusion. The correct position will be in the mid anterior axillary line between the fourth and sixth intercostal space. And the side holes of the tube should be medial to the inner margins of the rib. And this is very crucial. The potential malposition can go to anywhere in the mediastinum or can cross the other side also, so can, can cause serious injuries to the heart and the great vessels also. Uh, the potential complication is the bleeding or nerve damaging. We'll speak also about the feeding tubes, uh, like nasogastric tube. The most is the correct position for sure is the stomach and the potential malposition location is, uh, could be in the esophagus, trachea, lung on, or uh, could coil also in the esophagus. Uh, the potential complication like aspiration, apnea, obstruction, irritation, trauma, perforation, and infection. And uh, we'll speak also about the central venous line, including the 
internal jugular catheter, subclavian, and femoral and peripherally inserted catheters, which is a pick line. The normal position will be the superior vena cava or inferior vena cava at the junction between both with the right atrium. And the potential malpositioned location will be the right atrium uh, or uh, proximal to the superior vena cava or IVC. The possible complication will be infection migration, thrombosis, and flipites. One of the important topics in pediatric age group for sure is the umbilical venous catheter in unit. The correct position is the inferior right atrium or the uh, uh, junction between the atrium and the inferior vena cava. It's a possible malpositioned locations is uh, could be in the heart, portal vein, ductus venosus, umbilical vein, or could coil also, or can also reach to the lung. Uh, the potential complications like misdirection, infection, perforation, thromboembolic event can occur anywhere in the systemic circulation and it also can cause abscesses in the liver. I, I saw a case uh, uh, in the last months, it, it, it caused abscess in the liver also. The, the most important thing here that the uh, uh, percentage of incidence of malposition is very high in uh, umbilical venous cluster can reach to 70% of cases. So this is a very important uh, topic. And uh, uh, also in the FRCR exam, there are many tricks uh, uh, in this case also. And also we will speak about the umbilical arterial catheter. We have two normal positions, high uh, position and low position. The high position, we can uh, remember it by uh, uh, October 6th, 6th October, as we know, all uh, as Egyptian. And the half of six is three, and the half of 10 is, is five. So we have the, the high position is T6 to T10, and the low position L3 to L5. But the high position is more preferred because there is no many branches at this level. While in the, uh, the lower position, we have many branches like the re renal uh, arteries, and the, it is very near to this level if we push the uh, 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 catheter slightly high. The malpositioned location, including the heart, umbilical artery, can coil in, in the umbilical artery, external or internal uh, iliac artery, or can coil in the umbilical artery or in the aorta. Uh, the possible complication as uh, UVC and also vasospasm. We have also others like ECMO tube, uh, urinary bladder catheter, temperature probe, shunt tube, gastrostomy tube, and suction catheter or caster tube. Okay, we will start with the endotracheal tube. As we mentioned, this is uh, preferred to be uh, in the midway between the inferior margins of the clavicles and the carina. So if uh, we draw a line at the midway between both, the this is the uh, correct position of the uh, endotracheal tube should be near to this uh, position, like this one. Uh, this is another example, as we see here. Uh, this is the uh, lower border of the clavicles, but the endotracheal tube almost at, at this level, so this is in, uh, uh, in proper position and should be uh, pushed a little bit down. As we see here, also we have some pneumothorax and also we have pneumomediastinum. We have a big bowl of air here in the mediastinum also. This is a case with pneumothorax and pneumomediastinum. In this case, as we see here, this is the lower border of the clavicles and this is the carina. But the endotracheal, and this is the midway, the endotracheal tube should end here. But uh, if we see here, the endotracheal tube ends in the uh, proximal part of the right main bronchus, which is not normal position, and complicated also by complete collapse of the left lung, as we see here. This is another example. If we saw here, this is the clavicles, and this is the endotracheal, this is the trachea and the carina, but the endotracheal tube is away from the expected site of insertion, and this is actually in the esophagus, this is esophageal intubation, and this is a very serious uh, uh, condition. And uh, we have uh, uh, to pick it uh, 
because this is a serious and it can lead to hypoxemia and increase the risk of regurgitation and aspiration and it can cause brain injury and even death. So this is very important issue. We have to uh, put it in our mind when we are assessing endotracheal tube in a pediatric age group or even in adult. This is another example, as we see here, the endotracheal tube ends at the level of the crina. So this is also in uh, abnormal position and should to be corrected. This is another example in a patient with tension pneumothorax in the right side and also another pneumothorax in the left side. The endotracheal tube is almost uh, at the level of the uh, carina. Uh, roughly, we can count, uh, this is a lower level of the clavicle, we can count one vertebrae, one vertebra and a half, either from the lower border of the clavicle or from the carina. We can count one border, uh, one uh, ver vertebral body and a half, and this is should be the normal position of the endotracheal tube, which is not the case here. We have the low position of endotracheal tube, as we see. Um, this is another example also. This is the left main bronchus in the tracheal tube at the level of the crina. So this is uh, in abnormal position. This is another example in the right main bronchus. Now we will go to the tracheostomy tube. Uh, the same like the endotracheal tube, its level should to be um, uh, one vertebra and a half above the uh, Carina, this is the level of carina. This is the left main bronchus. Uh, uh, this is uh, one vertebrae and a half, so this is in normal location. This type of endotracheal uh, of uh, tracheostomy tube is called armored tracheostomy tube in Arabic, al mudarra. This is in, in case of uh, difficult airways, they can use this one because it's it, it more powerful uh, uh, compared to the previous one, the other one, this one. This is a, the commonly used uh, tracheostomy tube uh, type, this one. But uh, as we see here, uh, uh, the, the, the lower end of the tracheostomy tube inside the uh, right main bronchus and associated also with uh, opacity related to the left uh, lower lung, which could be coll collapse related to a, a left lower loop as a complication of uh, the incorrect position of the tracheostomy tube. We'll go now to the chest tubes or the intercostal tubes or the drainage tubes. Uh, as we mentioned, it, it should be uh, inserted between the fourth and sixth, uh, inter uh, uh, between the fifth and the inter uh, and uh, fourth and the fifth intercostal spaces in the mid axillary line, especially anterior mid axillary line. And this one used for drainage of pneumothorax, uh, as we see here, and sometimes also used to drain uh, fluid. In case of pneumothorax, it's supposed to, to be more apical in, in, in fluid like this one will be more lateral and the holes should to be medial, medial to the inner borders of the ribs, like this one. Uh, so this is a correct position. And this is a pigtail uh, drainage tube also with the holes seen medial to the inner border of the rib. So this is a correct position. This one also the holes seen medial to the inner border of the rib and this is a correct position. But uh, here in the tracheal tube looks in lower position as we see. Uh, this is a combination between pigtail a drainage catheter and chest tube here. This is a, a side hole in correct position and here also. Uh, uh, and this is an example uh, that uh, gives us an idea about the incidence of, of complication in, in, in this case because it's very easy to injure any organ in the mediastinal uh, region. Uh, here also the intracal tube, as we see, it is high in position. This is above the level of the clavicle, so this is in, in high position. This is a patient with right-sided tension pneumothorax, and for sure we will manage this one by inserting a chest tube. And this is after insertion of the chest tube, and the, the side holes looks to be medial to the inner uh, margin of the ribs, but the pneumothorax is still the same. So 
for sure there is a problem. After doing CT, we found that the uh, chest tube is subpleural in position, which was mistaken here as an as normal in position. Uh, so uh, uh, this is a common trick, and you have to put in your mind uh, this trick in case of non drainage of fluid or air like this patient. We'll go now to the feeding tubes, nasogastric tube for sure. Uh, this is a normal position, okay. should to be 5 to 10 centimeter below the uh, gastroesophageal junction or the level of the diaphragm. So this is in accepted location. Uh, this is another example of normal position of uh, nasogastric tube. Also, this is another example of a normal position. Uh, here also another example. If you look here, this is a nasogastric tube. This is the tube from outside the patient, then curl it up, then go down, then it's lower end, almost at the distal end of the esophagus. So this is incorrect position and should to be repositioned. This is the lower end of the uh, uh, nasogastric tube. What do you think here? Is this is here uh, in normal position or not? Uh, is this too long? Is this too short? Is this in abnormal location? As we see here, we have a feeding tube, which is very long, but in the same time, it's very large. So this is not an esogastric tube. This is an esogational tube. And the esogational tube is most of the time is thicker uh, than the esogastric tube and it contains this uh, uh, areas. So this is not an esogastric tube. This is an esogational tube, which is in normal position. But if we look carefully, we have the esogastric tube, which here go to the left main bronchus so we have to nasogastric tube uh, uh, nasogastric tube in normal position and nasogastric tube in abnormal position in the left uh, main bronchus this is another example but now in the right main bronchus and also care and i saw a case which in, in which the the tube perforates the diaphragm and go to the liver and cause an abscess in the liver uh, this is another uh, case we have here, the nasogastric tube, which has been curled. There is kinking here and curled up. So this is abnormal location of the nasogastric tube. And this is another example. It's curled up and go again. So this is incorrect position. This is another example we have here. If we make zooming for this slide, we have large pouch of air related to the base of the neck associated with vertebral anomalies and also we have rib anomalies and we have failure to insert nasogastric tube into the esophagus in a new unit uh, with multiple secretions. In this case, we have to suggest that the child has esophageal atresia and uh, tracheoesophageal fistula, distal tracheoesophageal fistula because we have air in the abdomen and it was the case, really, in this patient. This patient was vectoral, as we know, in, 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 in case of uh, presence of tracheoesophageal fistula with vertebral anomalies, cardiac anomalies, and others like radial ray anomaly, if the upper limb is included in the study, uh, the radius and thumb can be absent also in this case. Uh, and this patient was vectoral. As we know, in vectoral, we will have we, we should to investigate for any obstructions at the beginning of the elementary tract in the esophagus like esophageal atresia and the end of the elementary tract like in perforate anus and the middle of the elementary tract in the uh, region of the duodenal atresia plus the cardiac anomalies as well as the uh, 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 vertebral anomalies. Here, what do you think the position of nasogastric tube? Is this a normal position or not? For sure, we don't have nasogastric tube. We have another tube here. The nasogastric tube will not be like this appearance. This appearance is typical for suction tube, which is used for a uh, suction of the retained secretions in case of esophageal atresia. So this is a suction tube. And here there's another example of coiling of the uh, nasogastric tube in the uh, air pouch related to the uh, esophageal atresia. And here also, uh, we have another tube. 
what do you think is this is a, a, a nasogastric tube for sure no this is not a nasogastric tube we have something inside this is a ph probe uh, by which they can measure the ph of the esophagus uh, in case of gastroesophageal reflux work up and this tube should be above just above the level of the gastroesophageal junction so this is ph probe in correct position here also we have nasogastric tube in normal position we have intratracheal tube at the level of the clavicle uh, accepted but uh, we have another tube here which is the esophageal temperature probe uh, uh, this curled structure is the uh, uh, temperature probe which can be used through the esophagus or through the rectum so uh, we have to be familiar with this appearance of uh, device uh, the correct position of this uh, uh, device should be in the distal third of the esophagus just behind the mid aspect of the heart so this is incorrect position now we'll go to the pig tube a uh, percutaneous endogastric tube this is uh, used for uh, feeding and also, there is many complications like uh, leakage or uh, like pneumoperitoneum or something like this. This is an example of pneumoperitoneum. We have extra uh, bowel air here, uh, which is freely seen in the, in, in the uh, abdomen after insertion of uh, big tube. And uh, this is another example after insertion of uh, big tube. We have big air shadow here. In the lateral views, it is pneumoperitoneum here noted in the abdomen. We'll go to the vascular lines. Uh, we'll start with the peak line. Peak line will be the small line. Very, uh, the caliber is small, and uh, most of the time inserted um, uh, through the uh, uh, upper limb or lower limb, and sometimes also through the scalp of the, the kids. It's a uh, um, Lower end shouldn't go to the right atrium, should be in the distal uh, superior vena cava if it in the upper limb or the scalp, and should be the, the upper end of the inferior vena cava if it inserted through the lower limb. So uh, we have two levels. This is uh, levels of the heart, T4 and T9. So in case of uh, uh, peripherally inserted line in the upper limb or scalp, shouldn't exceed T4, which is the same level of uh, crina, by the way, and also the uh, peak line inserted from the uh, lower limb shouldn't go far uh, to T9 uh, because the, the if the line go to the right atrium can cause arrhythmia or something like this. So it is very important uh, to be uh, outside the uh, cardiac shadow. This is an example of. Uh, a peripherally inserted line which is in abnormal position it count uh, this is axillary subclavian then the right brachiocephalic then the uh, superior vena cava going to the right atrium and the, i think also may reach to the right ventricle also so this is abnormal location this is another example uh, this one came a uh, reach sorry reaching the right atrium and after that crossing to the other side so we have two pathways either patent from an foramen oval going to the uh, uh, left atrium or going through the coronary sinus so this is in, in in both cases this is abnormal location and should to be readjusted this is another example here crossing the midline through the uh, foramen oval to the left atrium then go to the left upper pulmonary vein so this is also abnormal location and should to be adjusted. Uh, this is another example. We have left-sided peak line. As we see here, we have a very weird uh, uh, path way of the uh, line. The line here in the axillary vein, then subclavian vein, then supposed to cross the midline in the left preoccephalic to meet the right brachiocephalic to form the superior vena cava but in this case 
it go down to the heart directly so we have here anomaly which is the persistent left superior vena cava and persistent left superior vena cava normally drains to the coronary sinus so this is the area of the coronary sinus so if we draw it this is axillary vein subclavian vein and then the left superior vena cava draining to the coronary sinus then to the right atrium then to the IVC, then to right hepatic vein. So this is a very weird pathway of a uh, peak line. Here also another example of uh, abnormal location. We uh, inserted uh, right upper limb uh, peak line, go to the subclavian, then go down. So this is also in a uh, abnormal position, going to uh, the right axillary region, maybe in uh, uh, a branch of the uh, uh, of the articular branches here in a patient with osteogenesis imperfecta as you see we have multiple fractures in the ribs and the long bones here also this is uh, another example of the same uh, pathway and this is another example we have here a central venous line coming from the left internal jugular pathway going down, the internal jugular will meet the uh, subclavian to form the uh, brachiocephalic vein. Brachiocephalic vein cross midline to meet the right brachiocephalic to form the uh, superior vena cava. But in this case, the line crossing midline and they go back through the brachiocephalic, right brachiocephalic vein. Uh, and also, as we see here, we have high nasogastric tube. Nasogastric tube ends here. So we have. Uh, both abnormal position, uh, both tubes with abnormal position. Here also the nasogastric tube in abnormal position. Here also, uh, this is the same patient after uh, uh, changing the, the line, and now it's curled, go back through the subclavian, left subclavian vein, and still we have the nasogastric tube also in high position. Uh, this is the a uh, lower limb peak line, as we see, should, shouldn't should reach the heart. It can be anywhere uh, from the pelvis to the, the heart here, but shouldn't reach the region of the heart. And also should uh, uh, ascend on the right aspect of the colon, because uh, as we know that the inferior vena cava is a right-sided structure, so the line should ascend it, it, uh, uh, in the right side of the vertebral uh, column. Sorry. This is another example of uh, right lower limb peak line. Uh, here also, this is another example of uh, left lower limb uh, peak line, and this is also a peak line from the uh, left uh, upper limb. Uh, here also, the endotracheal tube is low in position, as you see. And here also another example of uh, left lower limb peak line ascend along the right side of the vertebral column. Here we have a peak line which ascend along the left side of the vertebral column. So in this situation, we have a weird uh, pathway of the left peak line. The explanation for that could be that the patient has situs inversus totalis, but here the liver is in normal position and the uh, spleen and the, the heart also in normal position. So I don't think that we have situs inversus totalis. Another explanation that the patient has double IVC and this is uh, the left-sided IVC. But the, the, the thing again is that, that we have some curling in the tube here. If we compare this one, this is a normal pathway, we'll go smoothly to the uh, uh, IVC. But here we have some kinking. So after doing lateral view for this patient, the uh, the peak line go through a lumbar vein, going to the uh, spinal canal and going up here. And uh, unfortunately, this ba baby has a permanent complication, neurogenic bladder and the flaccid paraplegia. Uh, so it is very important to trace the whole course of the line and it's very important to know the normal vascular pathway and the expected uh, uh, vascular anomaly also uh, to, to be aware uh, of this one and to give a correct 
diagnosis and the correct possibilities for every patient. This is another tube in pediatric age group and also used in adult. As we see here, we have large, wide, double tunneled tube inserted here in the left internal jugular vein. This one is a permacase and this one used in case of dialysis. As we see here, we have multiple osteolytic lesions noted in the bones in a case uh, or a patient who has a uh, chronic renal failure. So we have to suspect that this is uh, pr multiple brown tumors. Also, we have softening of the bone and uh, osteomalacia. The bone is, is very easily to be bended. And also we have some uh, thing like rachitic rosaries because of the osteomalacia seen in this patient also. This is another example. As we see here, we have a line go through the left internal jugular vein, crossing the midline, and going to the right superior vena cava, which is in correct position. Uh, but what is this line? This line is portacus. Portacus is something inserted under the skin to uh, give the patient continuous medication, either chemotherapy or antibiotics. And uh, this is used in case of uh, uh, long-standing infections like uh, cystic fibrosis, uh, or in case of malignancy like lymphoma or Ewing sarcoma. As we see here, if we look carefully, the left clavicle, uh, the left uh, uh, scapula is absent, and we have surgical clips here. Uh, this is the previous X-ray of the same patient. We have here a uh, lesion in the left uh, scapula, and this one proved to be Ewing sarcoma. So this is a portacase. Uh, giving the patient chemotherapy in case of Ewing sarcoma, which is in correct position. We'll go now to umbilical venous catheter. The best way of uh, uh, umbilical venous catheter, as we know that in the uh, umbilical cord, there is two arteries and one vein. The, uh, the umbilical vein has a, a, a Bus way along the anterior aspect of the abdomen or arterial abdominal wall, while the uh, umb umbilical vein will go to the uh, uh, internal uh, to the internal iliac veins, then as uh, uh, arteries, then ascend along the posterior aspect of the abdomen in the aorta. So, if we have lateral view of the uh, uh, abdomen in a child. It is easy to, to, to know if this tube is umbilical venous catheter or, uh, or uh, arterial catheter because the, the venous catheter will be anterior while the uh, arterial will be posterior. Uh, uh, the uh, course through the umbilical vein go to uh, uh, the uh, ductus venosus and after that going to the, uh, there's the ductus venosus here which uh, connect the vein here which is the IVC to the left portal vein. So we have many uh, possible locations, uh, abnormal location may go to the left portal vein, may go uh, to, to the main portal vein or the right portal vein. So we have many courses according to this appearance. Uh, here, the lateral view to so the umbilical venous catheter runs through the an, an anterior abdominal wall and its uh, position can can be a little bit to the right, little bit to the left. It is flexible in position. While the umbilical arterial catheter, it is linked to the aorta, so this is a fixed position. Uh, also, one thing that the umbilical venous catheter, umbilical arterial catheter, go down, then go up. Uh, so in in AP view, we will have kinking in the uh, uh, catheter, umbilical arterial catheter. While in the venous one, it will run smoothly. So this is examples uh, of uh, uh, abnormal position of the uh, uh, umbilical venous catheter. It go up, as we mentioned, it is uh, uh, can run uh, along the right side, sometimes the left side. So uh, be flexible with the appearance of the uh, umbilical venous catheter. Go up, then go down. It went to the left. Uh, portal vein, then go down, so slightly uh, go through a mesenteric vein. We have two example here. Uh, here also, it goes up, so we have a, 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 a high position of the umbilical uh, uh, venous 
catheter also the umbilical arterial catheter here this is a t12 t uh, 11 t10 so it is a t10 it is accepted in accepted location this is a nasogastric tube slightly need to be pushed more down and the intertracheal tube at the level of the uh, carina so this is low in position uh, this one is slightly low in position, uh, umbilical venous caster. It's run smoothly. There is no kinking. Here also, the umbilical venous catheter go to the heart, then uh, foramen oval, then to the left atrium. So this is abnormal location. Here also, the same. This is abnormal location of the uh, umbilical venous catheter. Uh, here, the umbilical venous catheter runs smoothly, but it go up to the heart. This is the umbilical arterial catheter. There is kinking down, then go up. And, and this is nasogastric tube and the endotracheal tube. Here, it uh, go to the right side, to the right uh, portal vein. Here also to the right portal vein, another example. Here also go to the left side, likely splenic vein, likely. Here also go then kinking and go back to the right side. Could be uh, also a, 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 a visceral related to the stomach or the spleen here. So we have a weird position here. The same position here, likely splenic vein also. We'll go now to the umbilical arterial catheter. We, ha uh, we have two umbilical arteries. One go to the internal iliac, the left one, and one to the uh, right one. Then go up through the aorta. We have two uh, positions, as we mentioned, low position and the high position. The high one is preferred is uh, October 6th. Then uh, the half of 10 is uh, 5, and the half of uh, uh, 6 is 3. So it will be L3 to L5 as this one. Here, this is the uh, umbilical uh, arterial catheter. We have here, uh, this is a T12, this is T11, this is T10, 9, so this is in a correct position. But as we see here, we have this gastric tube, which is high in position. Uh, this is another example. The arterial catheter go more up at the level of the aorta. This is a very high position and should to be corrected. Here also it kinks in the aorta and the uh, then go down. This is abnormal position. And this also go down and try to ascend to the aorta, then kink it again in the aorta. So this is, this is uh, kinking of the umbilical arterial catheter. And also came here, go to the aorta and crossing it to the left side, left common iliac and uh, go to the left side. And this is a very common complication also. And the umbilical, uh, Venous caster also is high in position in this patient. Here also, this is high in position, umbilical arterial catheter. Uh, we'll go now to the others. We finished the main ones, but we'll go now to the others. The most commonly seen also is the VB shunt. As we see here, this is a shunt connecting the ventricular system up to the peritoneum down to drain the extra fluid to the uh, peritoneum. Uh, so uh, uh, we are searching for any kinking uh, fracture, any abnormal location or something like this, but in, in this position, it, it, it looks to be accepted. But here we have this connection of the tube. Uh, we have also ab abnormal uh, location of the tube. It, it go down through the right inguinal canal here, uh, kink it and go to the right inguinal canal. This is a very weird. And here also it's already disconnected from the upper part of the tube. Here also it's go, then curl it up, then perforate the stomach, then go up here to the uh, uh, distal esophagus. This is a very weird location also. And here also it uh, runs down through uh, the rectum. It perforates the rectum and go down. And here also uh, perforated the urinary bladder and go through the urethra. So we have many weird uh, uh, pathways of the um, uh, uh, VB shunt tubes.
we'll go now also to ECMOTube. ECMOTube is an extracorporeal technique to oxygenate the child in case of a cardiorespiratory failure. We have two types, either venovenous or venoarterial. And when you have two parallel big tubes, this is the biggest tube in the, in the child, uh, two parallel tubes, this is, will be venoarterial. While if you can, if, if you see one large tube or two tubes which uh, on the same line, this is, will be venovenous uh, uh, ECMO tube. Like this one, this is one tube. This is a veno venous, and uh, this is the pathway of the tube itself. And this is veno venous because both lines, both tubes are, are in the same line. And uh, this is a veno venous also. But we, this one is a veno arterial, veno arterial tube. Here's the oxygenation occur outside the lung. This is another uh, line also in case of uh, post cardiac surgery. They can uh, sometimes put. Uh, right atrial line line in, in into the right atrium itself and this is a very common we have also the uh, double j stents and the bcn stents uh, also biliary stents and vascular stents we'll go now to the first x-ray in the lecture this one and the question was how many lines and the tubes in this case if you are reporting this one you will take time to report because we have many lines we can count, this is the first line, this is nasogastric tube, which is seen in normal location. Also, the intracranial tube, this is the uh, carina here, one vertebra and a half, so this is accepted location. And also, we have umbilical venous catheter, which is in accepted location at the uh, lower, uh, at the superior end of the superior vena cava, accepted uh, location. We have here the umbilical arterial catheter, which is kinked in the aorta, so this is in abnormal location. We have also vascular line, peak line here in the femoral side, which is in satisfactory location. We have also, this is urinary bladder catheter here, which is in satisfactory location. And also we have temperature probe, which now seen through the rectum, not the esophagus. And so we have mini tubes in one X-ray, which uh, if there is two or three of them in abnormal location, we will take time for us from us to report this one. We'll go now to some quick cases, quiz cases, as we see here. Uh, we have nasogastric tube in normal position and you have endotracheal tube at the level of the proximal end of the uh, uh, right main bronchus. So this is in uh, abnormal position and should to be uh, readjusted. And here we have uh, umbilical venous catheter, slightly low, but uh, sometimes accepted. Uh, also, the umbilical uh, arterial cluster very high in position, and I, I think it's crossed the level of the aorta and to go to the the left subclavian or the left uh, uh, common carotid uh, artery. Endotracheal tube in normal position, nasogastric tube in normal position. This is another example. Endotracheal tube go to the right main bronchus, and we have collapse of the uh, right upper uh, loop. The explanation of that that this child has peak trachea or uh, 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 there is a separate uh, 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 bronchus, big bronchus, sorry, uh, arises from the trachea uh, to uh, going to the right upper loop. So this is the most logic explanation for this collapse after uh, this uh, insertion. And this one, after uh, adjustment, the collapse has been resolved. Uh, this is uh, another example here. Uh, this is a uh, uh, carina, and this is just above the carina, so we, we have uh, here a little bit uh, low position of the endotracheal tube, uh, nasogastric tube in normal position. We have big line here, which is in satisfactory location. Here, tube kink it down, then go up. This, this is uh, uh, umbilical arterial cluster, then go up, then go to the left subclavian vein. Here, we have umbilical uh, arterial uh, catheter and the level of this one, two, three, and, and the level of L3, so this is accepted, nasogastric tube accepted, uh, endotracheal tube low on position, but we have a weird tube coming from here, up, 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 then uh, disappeared, and this is also double tunneled here, which is a typical appearance of uh, 
uh, umbilical venous catheter and for sure this is was umbilical venous catheter going to the right atrium then a superior vena cava uh, then the uh, 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 brachycephalic vein then the internal jugular vein going up to the brain and this is this was a, a disaster in our hospital really uh, this one uh, uh, we have here nasogastric tube high in position we have uh, endotracheal tube low in position we have umbilical venous catheter in slightly low but uh, sometimes it accepts this position also uh, here also umbilical venous catheter in the right portal vein and the endotracheal tube and the nasogastric tube in satisfactory location if you look carefully we have also fracture here noted in this patient endotracheal tube low in position brachial arterial catheter accepted umbilical venous catheter accepted uh, in a patient with respiratory distress syndrome, this is uh, uh, another patient, intratracheal tube, low on position, tension pneumothorax on the right side, nasogastric tube, normal position, umbilical uh, uh, venous catheter, normal position. Uh, 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 I don't know, this is this one from outside, and also ECG leads, nothing in this one. This one, umbilical. Uh, arterial catheter in uh, normal position, umbilical venous catheter high position, nasogastric uh, tube in normal position, endotracheal tube low on position. We have also big tail drainage tube on the right side, which reaching uh, the mediastinum, but there is no definite complication in this study. We have here a temperature proof, uh, which is uh, in satisfactory location, so to be at the middle uh, distal side of esophagus or uh, mid aspect of the heart endotracheal tube at the level of the right main bronchus which is a uh, low on position and should to be adjusted and thank you i'm very happy to for any questions thank you dr ahmed uh, thank you for this very informative uh, presentation and uh, very nice picture uh, I, I see some uh, question in the chat. Maybe you can uh, just uh, have a quick look. Yeah. And uh, if there is any chance to, to answer some of them. Yeah, I will check here. Sorry. Uh, uh, the question about the big tubes is uh, uh, we can go to the region. Uh, so sometimes in, in, in patients with uh, difficult feeding, they uh, uh, insert a tube into the stomach directly to feed the patient by this uh, uh, tube. Uh, one minute. Oh, sorry. Big tube. Nasogastric tube. Yeah. Yeah, this one. This one is... Uh, uh, Percutaneous endogastric tubes. This is put inside the stomach itself to give the feeding of the child directly through this tube. Uh, and this is very important and also it, it changes by, by, by time, uh, sometimes by pediatrician and also sometimes by radiologist. And there is many complications associated with this tube, either leakage. So in, the, in this case, sometimes they ask us to in, uh, inject contrast into the, uh, the big tube and uh, have a, a, a abdominal x-ray for the patient to, to, to see if there is any leakage of contrast outside the bowel or not. Uh, and also, uh, sometimes uh, th there is a possibility of pneumoperitoneum the, the, because of the, uh, there is no sealing, uh, correct sealing of the tube to the, to, to the stomach. So uh, the air from the stomach or air from outside go uh, to, uh, 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 to, to be free in the peritoneum. And the, uh, both... Uh, both these are the most complications we we have made in uh, in our clinical practice. Uh, in tube tension. I think uh, yes. There is. Uh, I don't know if there is another question or this is the last question here. Uh, big tube inside the of stomach or uh, Doctor Ahmed, this one, or you answer it already. Uh, for the big tube? Yes, there is a question, last question here, big tube inside the human stomach or what yeah. if it... Okay, so yeah, we it's... already answered. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much and... Uh...